Human Resource Management, Module 4, Training and Development, at the end of this lesson you will be able to, discuss the importance of training and development, identify the differences between training and development, understand its process and methods used in training, explain needs assessment process, in the book Fundamentals of Human Resource Management, no ETAL, 2007, aptly said that employees today receive their first training during their first day on the job. This is the orientation of employees for them to become familiar with assigned tasks, the organization's practices, policies, and procedures. This is the procedure for providing new employees with some basic background information about the firm, its culture, and the job. Training and development, refers to official and ongoing educational activities within an organization designed to enhance the fulfillment and performance of employees. Training, is a learning process that involves the acquisition of knowledge, sharpening of skills, concepts, rules, or changing of attitudes and behaviors to enhance the performance of employees. Development, is a method of allowing employees to grow by giving them opportunities take on greater or bigger responsibilities in preparation for more challenging tasks in the future. The training process, 0 any, needs assessment, or identifying training needs, 2, training objectives or establish specific goals, 3, designing the training programs or select appropriate methods for, implementation of the training program, 5, training evaluation or evaluate program, and six feedback, needs assessment, identifying training needs, this refers to the process used to determine if training is necessary. It identifies specific job performance deficiencies and increases productivity. Training need is a difference between standard performance and actual performance. Hence, it tries to bridge the gap between standard performance and actual performance. The gap clearly underlines the need for training of employees. Hence, under this phase, the gap is identified in order to assess the training needs. Methods used to gather needs assessment information, there are many ways to conduct a needs assessment. Following are a few of the most commonly used approaches, interviews, the trainer uses this technique to identify people who can provide information about the need and then interviews them. The advantage to this type of interview is that you can obtain in-depth information about the situation and you can get others' ideas about how to handle the situation. Survey Questionnaire, a tool is used when a trainer wants to collect specific information from a large group or a widely dispersed group. The advantages are that you can include many people, and the results are clear-cut. Observation, this is a good needs assessment technique in two circumstances. First. It is useful when a trainer is assessing the need for skill-based training. Second, it is a good technique to use when a trainer is asked to conduct a program that changes behavior, for example, customer service, giving constructive feedback, flipping flapjacks, welding an I-beam. Focus groups, another approach is a focus group. Some would like the interview, the trainer identifies key people who can provide information about the need. However, instead of interviewing them individually, the trainer interviews them in groups. Performance data reviews, this technique is used when performance criteria are clear and there is sufficient data available to measure the performance criteria. The advantage to this approach is that the training topics and goals are easy to determine. Needs assessment process, organizational analysis, involves determining the appropriateness of training, given the company's business strategy and support by managers and peers for training activities. Person slash performance analysis, determining the training needs of current employees. This means verifying that there is a significant performance deficiency and whether that deficiency should rectify through training. Task analysis, assessing training needs of new employees. This is a detailed study of the job to determine what specific skills required. It includes identifying the important tasks and knowledge, skills, and behaviors that need to be emphasized in training for employees. Training objectives, establish specific objectives, after determining training needs, objectives must be established to meet those needs. Effective training objectives should state the benefit to the different stakeholders in the organization. Hence, 
the primary purpose of training should focus to bridge the gap between standard performance and actual performance. This can be done through setting training objectives. Thus, basic objective of training is to bring proper match between man and the job. Training objectives can be categorized as follows, instructional objectives, what principles, fact, and concepts should be learned in the training program taking into consideration the positions of the participants. Organizational and departmental objectives, what impact will the training have on organizational and departmental outcomes such as absenteeism, turnover, reduced costs, improved productivity, accident rate, and the like. Individual and growth objectives, what impact will the training have on the behavioral and attitudinal outcomes of the individual trainee and on the personal growth of the trainee? Designing the training programs, select appropriate methods, an appropriate training method is to be identified and selected to achieve the stated objectives. There are a number of training methods available but their suitability is judged as per the need of organizational training needs. Training methods, cognitive methods, and behavioral methods, cognitive methods, dwell on giving theoretical training to the trainees. The various methods under cognitive approach provide the rules on how to do specific tasks such as written or verbal information and demonstrate relationships among concepts. Behavioral methods, are more of giving practical training to the trainees. These methods are best used for skills development. Trainers need to understand the pros and cons of each method and its impact on trainees keeping their background and skills in mind before giving the training. The various methods that come under cognitive approach are, lecture slash discussion approach, it involves transmitting large amount of factual information to a large number of people at a given time. It is primarily one way, from the trainer to the audience. Demonstration slash hands-on method, this requires the trainee to be actively involved in learning. This is ideal for developing specific skills, understanding how skills can be transferred to the job, and experiencing all aspects of completing a task. Computer-based training, CBT, this is an interactive experience in which the computer provides the learning stimulus where the trainee must respond. The computer analyzes the responses and provides feedback to the trainee. Virtual reality, is training method that puts the participant in a 3D environment. The three-dimensional environment simulates situations and events that are experienced in the job. Distance training, corporate training is gradually changing. The HR makes use of the power of technology to train employees. If their technicians need to immediately repair a particular machine that broke down for the first time, what they will do is just find out the brand and the manufacturer, make phone call and repair instructions. 6. Brainstorming, it is a group activity in which participants generate possible solutions to a problem. The upside of brainstorming is that it stimulates and uses the participants' experiences and ideas to solve a problem. 7. Worksheet, this method is used to perform quantitative exercises. A participant can relate their general learning to the specific areas of their work. The various methods that come under behavioral methods are, games and simulations, this method stimulates learning because participants are actively involved and they mimic the competitive nature of business. Case studies and role playing, in this type of training, participants assume specific characterizations and act out a particular situation or problem. On the job training, involves having a person learn a job by actually performing it. The employee is shown how perform the job and is allowed to do it under trainer's supervision. Implementation of the training program, implement programs, once the staff, course, content, equipment, and topics are ready, the training is implemented. Completing the training design does not mean that the work done because implementation phase requires continual adjusting, redesigning, and refining. Under this step, the prepared plans and programs are implemented to get the desired output. Under it, employees are trained to develop for better performance of organizational activities. Preparation is the most important factor to guarantee success. Therefore, the following are factors that should be kept in mind while implementing training program, the trainer, physical setup, establishing rapport with participants, reviewing the agenda, training evaluation, evaluate program, 
This will help check whether training has had the desired effect. Evaluations will help employers or supervisors determine the amount of learning achieved and whether or not an employee's performance has improved on the job as a result. It consists of an evaluation of various aspects of training in order to know whether the training program was effective. In other words, it refers to the training utility in terms of effect of training on employees' performance. Feedback, finally, a feedback mechanism is created in order to identify the weak areas in the training program and improve the same in future. For this purpose, information relating to classroom, food, lodging etc., are obtained from participants. The obtained information, then, evaluated, and analyzed in order to mark weak areas of training programs and for future improvements. Orientation, refers to the assistance given to the newly hired employees in adjusting to the new work environment. This program aims to provide new employees with pertinent information about the company. Regardless of the type of organization, orientation should be conducted at two levels, organization or overview orientation, topics discussed include overview of the company, key policies and procedures, compensation, benefits, safety and accident prevention, employees union and relation if there is any, and the like. Departmental and job orientation, topics about the department function and the duties and responsibilities of the newly hired employee, policies, procedures, rules and regulation, and introduction of department employees. The HR department and new employees immediate supervisor normally share the responsibility for the orientation. End of module 4. Thank you.